Chapter 7 Dave Mason had always been proud of his brother Perry. Perry had always been the brains of the family and had become quite famous as an attorney. He had been out on a date with his new significant other when he had heard about the shooting at the lodge. He couldn't believe his ears as he listened on the radio to the news. Just a few years ago he had such a good time there for his brother's bachelor party. He knew that Perry and Paul were there because he had talked to his brother that afternoon. They had spoken about the hot topic that was on everybody's mind. Perry and he had both thought that the discussion could have become heated, but neither one of them even remotely thought that this could happen. Perry had stepped outside to speak with Hamilton. The thoughts of the day were turning around and around in his head. It was as if he was watching a movie with each moment replaying in his mind. But, had he missed something? Certainly, the events were quick and the memory of Paul being shot was very fresh in his mind. Paul he thought. The tall strong man with the family was now fighting for his life. Life Perry thought. It became clear to Perry something that in all the turmoil he had forgotten. When he had arrived at Paul's home to get Sue there had been a rose on the table. OMG he thought. The rose had been Della's way of telling him that she was pregnant. It had been the way that Sue had also told Paul when she wanted to tell him that she was pregnant. Then, Perry started thinking about the conversation that he and Paul had as they had walked to the lodge on that eventful night. He had told Perry that they were trying to have another baby. Sue was pregnant. This made Mater's even worse. No matter what happens I must protect Sue and that baby, he made a promise to his friend there and then. Paul's father had been sitting in the waiting room waiting to hear something about his son. As he watched others in the room he thought back to the old days. The old days when he was the head of the Paul Drake Detective Agency. He had retired over 12 years ago when he had been seriously injured in an automobile accident. The time had been right as his son was ready to be the head of the agency. Paul had been a brilliant detective and had made his father proud. With the help of his friend Perry the Paul Drake Detective Agency was now a well-known entity worldwide. Jen Drake was living one of her biggest nightmares. She had always worried whenever her husband had gone out on a case and when her son had taken over the business she had found herself worried all the time. Now, she was sitting in a waiting room and praying with her son's family and friends that her son would be alright and this nightmare would be over soon. Sue had been sitting there just waiting to hear anything from anyone. She was worried sick. Paul had been so grey and had so many tubes in him when he had been taken down to surgery. She had never seen someone look like that in her life. But, she had to be strong. Paul was sitting there not saying anything, but observing everything. She thought about the baby, the baby that she hadn't told Paul about yet. Oh he needed to be alright. Hamilton looked at his friend and studied his face. He had seen the look on his friend's face before. Perry was deep in thought and not quite ready to speak, so he decided to let his friend get his thoughts together. He took out his notebook and got ready to listen to what his observant and brilliant friend had to say. But, neither one of them had a chance to say anything because Perry looked up from his deep thoughts to see Dr. Dean walking down the hallway. He still had his surgical mask in his hand and by the look on his face, Perry knew. It had not been a long enough time. They had been told that the surgery would take hours and it had only been about an hour. He stepped out into the hallway and met the doctor. The words that the doctor said to Perry that day cut through his very soul his very being like a knife. He stood there for just a moment speechless. How was he going to tell his family Paul's family Paul's friends? Life with Paul had been an adventure. He had never once doubted his friend's honesty the bravery. From the day the two men had met they had been best friends. As Hamilton listened to the doctor he put his hand on his friend Perry's shoulder. He, too was lost. Paul had been a part of his life, even before Perry and Paul had met. As a young attorney he had used the Paul Drake Detective Agency a few times. He hadn't always been the district attorney. Prior to being the district attorney he had been a successful attorney. He had sat on both sides of the table. 
Della looked up to see her husband coming back into the room. He was standing there and with him came the doctor. No words needed to be spoken. The look on the doctor and Perry's face told them that Paul had not survived. Perry put his arms around Sue and said I promise that I will find the person that did this and see that they pay for it. I am so sorry. Sue, who had been fighting back tears started to cry. She reached over and held her young son. Paul Jr. sat there and cried his little heart out. Paul's parents cried also and held each other tight. It was the worst thing that had ever happened to any of them and now Perry and Paul's father were on a mission. Jen looked into her husband's eyes and knew in an instant what he was planning. He was going to take over the investigation. She knew that he had regretted retiring once in a while and knew that his determination was something she couldn't challenge. She did not want to challenge him anyways, someone had killed her son and she wanted them caught. Chapter 8, Chapter 8 It had been a warm autumn day when a young Jen Drake had gone to the doctors. She had suspected that she was pregnant for a couple of weeks now, but felt it was time for her to find out for sure. Her local family doctor was just two blocks from her parents' home where she and Paul lived and so the walk was a pleasant one. Excitement fright worry had hit her all at once as the doctor told her that she was indeed pregnant and having a baby sometime in March. As she had walked the short walk home, the air seemed to be fresher she was on top of the world. She hoped to have a healthy baby with a good life ahead. She loved her husband very much and she just couldn't wait to tell him. Paul Drake was in his wife's family home where he ran a small private detective agency. There were lots of cases for him to research and he was finding himself more and more overseas. In Europe a war raged, the war to end all wars was what people were being told. The United States had not yet entered the war and he was able to travel between the different countries, although it was getting very dangerous. Even though the United States had not joined the war several American men had joined the British in the war effort and some were not coming home. Time after time his ability as a detective was tested as he found missing young men. There was nothing harder than finding a missing man who was just 18 had died somewhere in a cold trench on a battlefield of a war that he had nothing to do with. Time and time again Paul found himself in those boots. He would be leaving once again in the morning. As Jen approached her childhood home she saw her mother out in the backyard beating a rug. Her mom was always at home doing something and she had a great childhood. Born during a time that girls weren't allowed many liberties her parents had encouraged her to do things for herself. She had grown to be a confident lady with a good head on her shoulder. She had attended the local college and graduated with a degree in accounting. This degree had come in handy with the running of her husband's business. Finally the business was starting to turn a profit. Soon, she hoped they would be able to purchase their own home. Paul Drake was just starting to pack his bag when his wife had walked into the room. She was the prettiest woman he had ever seen and he smiled as she entered. Jen was so excited and she put her arms around her husband's neck. I am pregnant Mike. They were to have a child. Mike turned around and hugged his wife. What a thrill he was going to be a dad. Now, Paul knew that he needed to get very serious about work. It was not a thoughtful mature man that would expect his mother and father-in-law to provide him and his family shelter. They needed a home and this trip to Europe should bring him enough money to finally purchase a home that he had found just one block from their current home. It was a large home that needed some tender loving care. The home had a wraparound porch and four large bedrooms. It had belonged to a friend's mother. It had no indoor plumbing or electricity, but that could be added. The home was sturdy furnished and had a large yard. It was to be an ideal home in which he could raise his family. New York in the year 1915 was a busy one. There had been many changes in the city as electricity had been placed in most homes and watching the lights on the street still mesmerized Jen she was nervous about her husband crossing the Atlantic again. The newspapers announced over and over again that those horrible U-boats were out and looking for any ship that they felt were carrying ammunition. It had been just a short three years since the Titanic, praised as the unsinkable, had sunk when it struck an iceberg. 
the community was still in shock from that trip and her husband had lost both his parents. There had been room in the lifeboats for the women only and his mother had refused to leave her husband. But, as Jen looked up at the great ship she took a deep breath. It was a large ship and had ample lifeboats. It was early May and the United States was not in the war she told herself. As she watched Pad her husband Paul board the great ship Lusitania she waved. Jen stood on the dock for what seemed forever until the ship left and was totally out of sight. She walked back with her father who had driven them down to the ship in their new automobile. Paul had been up on deck when something happened on that fateful day. He had been watching the ocean when he had seen the torpedo approaching the ship. Moments, that's all he had as he grabbed the woman who had been standing near him and dropped her to the floor. He protected her and her child with his body doing his best to make sure that they were G equals safe. As he went to get up he realized that his arm was broken and hanging off of his Shaoi elder. But, pain was not something he needed to address at the moment. People were running and the ship was already leaning. With all his power he helped people into the boats. The woman had thanked him and run off. Just as Paul was helping another woman into one of the lifeboats there was another explosion. Somehow he fell unconscious into a lifeboat. It was days before he woke up in a hospital in Ireland. Jen had been at home when there came a phone call. It was Paul's mother. She was very upset and said that the Lusitania had sunk with over 1,000 dead. Jen's world collapsed. She felt hot cold tears worry, OMG she had thought. Desperate to find out what had happened to her husband Jen called the shipping office. But, to her dismay they had little information. Paul had not contacted anyone in their office, and there were several people unaccounted for. This worried her, as she knew her husband would have stayed on the ship and saved as many as he could, and if he had survived he would have contacted someone she was sure of that. She let her mother hold her in her arms as she waited to hear. Day after day the list of the dead appeared in the paper, but nothing was ever said about her husband. There were still hundreds missing and she prayed every day. Paul had woken up to a totally different world. He had no memory of anything after the initial shock of the torpedo. He looked down at his arm and realized that it had been set. He didn't even remember it breaking. Oh, but what a headache. He looked up to see a nurse smiling at him. Good morning sir. It is good to see you awake she had said with a smile. Can I please have your name? When you came here you had no identification on you and I know that your family is worried. Jen he thought. My name is Paul Drake. We have a home phone number. It is 2327. What is your name, he asked still a little groggy. I am Dora Street and I will get this message to the ship office right away she said with a smile. Little did they know that some 35 years later the two would meet once again. Chapter 9, Chapter 9 Poor Jen she was worried sick about her husband and there was nothing she could do but wait. There were the inquiries and every day the news carried more information. Finally after a week she received a phone call. It was the shipping office and Paul had been found. He had been knocked unconscious during the sinking and fallen into a lifeboat. There was no more information available and now she would have to wait once again. But he was alive and that was enough information for now. Paul was beginning to feel a little bit better and was now sitting up in the large ward that would be his home for the next two weeks. The ward was crowded by so many soldiers that had been injured. He watched as the nurses worked tirelessly helping them. But, his main nurse had been the lady that he had woken up to on that strange morning. Dora Street would be responsible for his recovery and he would never forget her. In one month Paul was out of the hospital and completing his work. As he boarded the ship that would take him home he said a prayer to the people who had been so good and kind to him. Jen was in the parlor when she had heard the front door open. She was surprised, because her mother and father were upstairs. She started to get up, which was not an easy task, now that she was getting quite large. Her long gown made it hard to get up out of a chair also. She had just managed to get up when she looked up. 
It was Paul, he was home. They ran into each other's arms and held each other for what seemed hours minutes seconds she didn't know. There was deep joy that night Paul was home and safe. He looked good, perhaps a few pounds lighter, but he was healthy and home. It was the 5th of August when Jen had first felt the pains of childbirth and later that afternoon Paul had been born in their new home with the wraparound porch just a block from the home where she had grown up. He had come out loud and clear and the doctor had said he weighed a good seven pounds. He had his father's blue eyes and blonde hair. World War I did come to the United States and Paul Sr. served his time. When he came home Jen and him went back to being a family of three. Paul was three at the time and a very inquisitive toddler. Paul would live in that new home until the Wall Street crash of 1929. As their son grew Jen and Paul were amazed at his detective skills. He was athletic and a member of the swim team. As a matter of fact he was the best swimmer on the team and received many awards. But, in 1929 the stock market crashed and Paul's detective agency was not getting any work. No one had any money and the family needed to do something. With worry and the sense of adventure in 1931 and at the tender age of 15 Paul and his parents made the daring move to California. After selling their home at a substantial loss his father had managed to purchase a truck. They had loaded up everything they could and had moved on to the land of opportunity. Life was good to the Drakes in California. Paul was a very popular athlete and continued to swim at every opportunity. In LA he was able to swim nearly year-round and his skills became better and better. He was a straight-A student and helped his father with his business at every opportunity that presented itself. He graduated from high school in 1932 and went on to college where he excelled. Paul was just settling down to working with his father, when the war started in Europe. At first it didn't seem as though there was going to be another war, but as it became apparent that all Europe was at war Paul knew that the United States would be forced to join in at some point. It was then that he made the decision to join the Navy. He wanted to be a member of the Navy SEALs and applied. The Navy needed young strong men who could swim and were pleased to have Paul apply. He had been an all-state swimmer and had been a contender for the Olympic team. In 1940 Paul at the age of 24 Paul joined the Navy SEALs. The decision would have a profound effect on him for the rest of his life. He swam sometimes as far as 20 miles and planted mines that would protect the harbors and sometimes would go and save the lives of missing sailors. Even for his young body the work was extremely difficult and he had seen men of his friends and comrades die or be badly injured w at while they were doing their duty. What happened while he was there he would never speak about, but it would have a profound effect on him for the rest of his life. Finally, the war was over and Paul was once again a free man. He had served his country and at the age of 29 he was ready to go back to his home and begin his life as a private detective once again. He still lived with his parents, but had plans to move to his own home soon. But, for now, he was happy settling down and getting on with his life. Paul had been in the office when a young lady had come into the office. They had been looking for a new secretary and had advertised the job. The office had been very busy and the girl that had worked there for the war had gone home to her husband and was having a baby. Her name was Susan Brown. She was a pretty thing with brown curly hair and a sweet smile. She was very young though as she had just graduated from high school. Sue Brown had been fascinated by the young man in the office. She guessed him to be in his twenties and very smart. He was the owner's son, she was told. That day Sue Brown began working for the Drake Detective Agency. At the tender age of 18 she had no idea how much this day would change her life forever.